Greetings folks. In this video, we're going to look at the transient response of RL circuits. So what I've got over here in Tina TI is a nice RL circuit, three resistors and a source. This should look familiar. This is similar to the circuit that we used in the RC and Thevenin videos. I've simply changed the resistors over here, brought them down from 300 to 30, 600 to 60, and 800 to 80. And I've replaced the capacitor and the load resistor with a 100 millihenry coil. And obviously, we're going to thevenize this circuit so that we can check this conveniently. To recap, the thevenin resistance is going to be the 30 in parallel with the 60 once we short the source. That's 20. That winds up being in series with the 80. So we get 100 ohms for our thevenin. The open circuit output voltage when we remove the inductor will tell us E thevenin. So the 80 is inconsequential here because it's leading to an open. So we just end up with a two-thirds voltage divider on E source. This is 12 volts. So E thevenin is 8 volts. Now our time constant is going to be 100 uh, millihenries divided by 100 ohms. That's one millisecond. So 5 tau, in other words, the time to steady state, is going to be 5 milliseconds. This pulse source starts at 0. This one goes up to 8. This one goes up to 12, obviously. Stays there for 10 milliseconds, so we should have plenty of time to see steady state. Then it's going to drop back down to 0 and stay there for another 10 milliseconds, so we can again watch the discharge phase and watch that go to steady state as well. Okay, so we're going to come up here and do a transient analysis. We're going to run this from 0 to 20 milliseconds. And here's our curve. Once again, I'm going to come in and change some of these colors so we can see things a little bit better. I'll use blue for this one. And I think last time we used fuchsia, and that worked pretty well. Oh, there you go. It's beautiful, right? It's beautiful. Okay, very quick. Let's just double check to make sure that VLOAD and VLOAD2 are identical because I don't actually see four curves, right? If we put the legend down here, there's the green VLOAD. It's not on here. It should be behind the associated curve. If we separate, sure enough, there we go. All right, there's our VLOAD. So we can see VLOAD and VLOAD2 are identical which is just what we expect from the thevenized um, equivalent. So we'll collect those curves back up, see what we have. All right, so our uh, load voltage number two, that's the inductor voltage. Now remember, the big thing about an inductor is current through the inductor cannot change instantaneously. So initially, the current through here is zero. So as soon as we power this up, it must remain zero. If that is the case, then there is no voltage across this resistor. All of the source appears across the inductor. All right, so our blue curve here shows that full eight volts. The fuchsia, which is the R thevenin voltage, starts at zero. And then we start to develop a current. It starts to rise, which is essentially echoed by the voltage on R thevenin. That's just Ohm's law, so we can see that going up at the same time we see the voltage across the inductor dropping. Five milliseconds later, we're at virtually steady state, and we can see, right, we're up to eight volts here, we're down to zero here. Then at 10 milliseconds, we switch this thing to zero volts, so that's like shorting this point, okay? Now remember, the current through the inductor cannot change instantaneously. So we have a current of eight volts, right, sitting across the 100 ohms. That's 80 milliamps. That can't just disappear. That 80 milliamps has to keep going. So that still produces a drop plus to minus across our thevenin, right? And it's going to start to decrease. So what ends up happening, according to KVL, this is plus to minus. This would have to be minus to plus, right? Minus at V load and plus at ground. So what we see is the voltage immediately flip polarity on the inductor. Right, so it's still pulling, cur pulling current through here, uh, but KVL has to be satisfied. So I still have the instant we throw that voltage back down to zero, I still have 8 volts on the resistor, and we must wind with minus 8 volts on the inductor for KVL to work out. And then that 
field starts to collapse, the current starts to reduce down to zero, and eventually uh, the voltage across the inductor and the resistor wind up at zero, and we're at steady state again. Okay? Really nice effect.